I'd love it to see sailboat cruising on a dead wind day with the sails up, power directly going to the engine, electric engine of course, without touching the battery. I think this is really cool. I think we are very close to it. The video you're watching is of an Ultramare with OPVs embedded in the sails, effectively making the sails a giant solar panel. This technology is going to change the landscape of how we produce power on the way. My name is John McConnell, I'm with Solar Sailor, and today we'll be talking to one of the developers of that technology and hear about his company. Professor Vance, thanks for joining us this morning. Please introduce yourself, give us an overview of yourself, how you got involved with the technology, and about your company. Good morning, or oh, well, to me it's the afternoon actually. Uh, I'm uh, Guillaume Vance and I am, uh, my job is I am, a, I am a professor at the university. I am a professor at the University of Bordeaux in France and I've been, uh, I've been working on all my research mostly focused on, fo on solar photovoltaics and especially the uh, emerging technology called organic solar cells. And um, on top of that, I am um, a navigator. I am a sailor, uh, amateur. Uh, I, I, I love sailing and I actually spend as much time as I can, especially in the summer, on my own sailboat, uh, a 38 foot uh, Beneteau. And uh, I am lucky enough to be able to combine um, my research and some uh, pleasure activities that is sailing uh, in the sense that I co-funded, funded uh, the company L. Uh, this is a long story. It, uh, we started to talk about it like uh, four years ago and uh, right before COVID lockdowns, <laughs> which <laughs> was not necessarily uh, the best time to um, create new companies, not the easiest time, I would say. Uh, but finally, we did it, and over the last three years, we have done a lot of experimentations um, on these, uh, this new technology, organic uh, photovoltaics. A lot of experimentations that we've conducted um, on, on the marine environment, especially, to make sure everything's fine. And uh, the first prototype of a, of a solar sail was uh, manufactured last year. Uh, we are playing with it uh, since uh, May, May 22. And uh, we are still playing with it. So we are now almost uh, a year after and uh, with four seasons. So it's kind of nice. Thanks, Gion. Can you give us an overview of the technology and where you think it's headed? Well, uh, as I said, it's uh, an emerging solar technology. Today, if you want to uh, produce electricity with light, with sunlight, you can uh, purchase the mainstream technology that is silicon, that is the one that we use on rooftop applications today. And uh, But there's many other um, technologies available uh, in labs, and, and not only in labs, also now in fabs. Uh, among these new technologies, a few are what we call the emerging ones, and the organic is one of them. It's quite recent. It's been more or less discovered uh, in the middle of the 90s. And um, it's, uh, it's a very promising technology because uh, organic solar cells can be printed, printed like, like on roll-to-roll -roll printing. So basically you could print solar cells like we today print newspapers. Um, they are printed in, uh, at low temperature, room temperature actually, and, um, and all the process of fabrication is, is very uh, modest in terms of energy consumption. Uh, they are printed in a roll, so they are flexible. So the solar cells are flexible, potentially highly flexible, uh, ultra light, and they are super thin. Uh, they do not contain any, uh, any uh, strategic materials, strategic raw materials or toxic materials. The process itself also, fabrication, is non-toxic. Uh, it's important these days. Uh, it means that, uh, at least for us in Europe, we can source the raw materials in Europe and we can use them 
uh, in European manufacturing to, to produce these solar cells. Um, and they, because they are printed, the targeted cost can be super low, uh, depend on the volumes, of course. But um, we, we are basically talking about a solar technology that could be printed from, uh, uh, from um, environmentally friendly materials uh, and, and to create some uh, very simple solar printed at low cost. Um, the other thing I didn't say is that they are uh, transparent. I can even show you. I have one here. <coughs> Let's. So you have one here. It's, uh, uh, you can see it, it's, it's quite flexible, so it, this one is, is flexible up to, uh, 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 we say two inches, but in fact we know we can go down to a, a diameter of three centimeter eventually. Um, and uh, they are flexible, they are uh, lightweight, they, they weight, but most of the weight comes from the encapsulations. If you work on the encapsulations, you can basically make them ultra lightweight. Uh, today, this product is probably uh, in the range of 500 grams per square meter. Uh, we know that this technology is the ultimate one in terms of weight, and that's why we choose that technology for AOL, for sales, and not only for sales. We also want to use it for in, in different, um, different applications. And uh, as I said, they can be relatively transparent. You can see my face, my face in, uh, in, 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 in inside. Uh, this one, well, you can even get more transparent if this is the goal, um, but um, but yeah, um, what did I, I think I've done it? <laughs> yes, I think that covered it really well. Um, how do you envision ill of your company being a sale maker? Are you going to develop it to the point where you'll license the technology to other marine manufacturers? That's uh, that's uh, 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 good questions. Aeol at the moment is not producing the cells itself. We are buying them and we are integrating them. Aeol is an integrator to bring this product to new market opportunities. Uh, we in and in, in using all the specificities and what makes this product unique, like transparency, lightweight, uh, etc. And the, uh, today we are uh, working together with a major cell manufacturer uh, and we are uh, about to commercialize it together. Uh, uh, we are not targeting to be a real entire cell manufacturer. That's know. great. I'm hoping there's companies watching this video that are looking to uh, incorporate your technology or set up at least teaming agreements or working agreements with you to do that. Now, can you kind of go into what kind of power output you're getting from the OPVs that you currently have in development or that you currently have installed on um, the platforms like the Ultramare and your own personal sailboat? The output you're talking about power. Output. That's correct. The, the current power output. This is exactly the, 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 the good point. Um, yes, we have plenty of info now. As I said, we, we, we've done three years of studies. We, we, before making the cells, we even um, used these cells on a multi um, trimaran, multi-50 racing trimaran called Leighton that crossed the Atlantic through the uh, Transat Jacques Vabre in 20, at the end of 2021. And, uh, uh, I also did a lot of experiments on my own boat. I, I kind of transformed my own boat as a small lab <laughs> and to do a lot of measurements of, uh, of, of, um, of um, spectral measurements and other uh, output measurements of different samples in real life, real conditions. It's, um, it's a very good question, you know, because what counts is not the uh, peak power of solar. You don't really care about the peak power of solar. You, pick, you, you really care about what? You really care about the amount of energy that you generated over a, a day. What do you have at the end of the day? And, um, and it's, uh, it's interesting because when my associate came to me, because I'm the scientist in the, in the team, and, and, and they initially asked me this question, they hey, uh, what if we put 10 square meter, uh, how much energy do we get at the end of the day? And I was completely unable to answer that. The main reason is that the solar panel will never be exposed in perfect conditions, you know, orthogonal to the sunbeam with the right angle, not moving and, and etc. 
uh, because it's a it's a boat, so it's bo it's it's moving, it's moving, and 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 the captain doesn't choose his course, uh, his direction as a function of the sun, more as a function of the wind and where you want to go. And uh, on a cruising day, you are going to tag, jibe, and so on. So it's, it's it was impossible to predict that. So we had to do experiments, and that's actually what we have done, and what we have now after almost a year of cruising with this sail. And um, so what's the output? The output is this sail that contains more or less 10 square meters of solar. Only a portion of the sail um, is able to produce between one and two kilowatt hour per day. And it's, um, it's a very, we were very happy with that because this boat specifically uh, does not consume that. So it means the boat is uh, positive in terms of energy. Um, the first boat we, we tested on has, had no over solar uh, capabilities, so it was the only source of electricity on board, and um, and, and and we were happy with this one and two, between one and two because the boat only consumes like one kilowatt hour per day, um, and and it's um, we are yeah quite happy with that. That's impressive, uh, and the future output looks very impressive also. Can you tell us like what stage your company is at? Are you still in the development stage or do you actually have products ready for the market? Can I say both? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think we are, uh, we actually have some orders already. So I would say we are ready to go to market. Uh, orders that will be orders for prototypes, of course, uh, things that, uh, that, that we, we, we have uh, not a long experience on yet. Um, so yes, we have some development to do. Already the two sales that we are manufacturing today are, 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 are going to be slightly different with some improvements. And uh, we know where to go and what needs to be done. We just need to have the capacity to, to perform that development. Will the OPVs be able to work on in-mass furling? Uh, I have a Beneteau 321. It has in-mass furling. I know it has pliability, but will it um, work with in-mass furling or boom furling? That's, uh, I wish as soon as we can to do, we, we have that. Uh, the reason is that my boat has also uh, in-mass furling main cell. And um, and at the moment, as we speak, no, uh, it's still it's still super challenging. The curvature of radius, the radius of curvature in the in the furler is is quite small, and you have uh, a lot of uh, hardcore constraints, mechanical constraints, especially when it goes in the mast. And uh, at the moment, I think we are not ready for that, except if the bud is a massive one with massive furler. And um, we are not, uh, we will, and one day, I think. Um, in terms of furling, uh, we, uh, we, are, we will, before doing in mass furling, we will, tr we will do uh, boom furling. I don't know if that's the English for that. The, the, which, uh, which on some boats uh, is, is much, uh, much more easier to do, uh, especially with our sail that are a little bit more, more um, they're a little bit more rigid than regular sales, so, you know. That brings up another point. Um, do OPVs affect the performance of a sale? I know that you have it on an Ultramare, which is a performance catamaran. You also have some racing experience, but how has it affected the sales performance? The, the, the sale, the, the one which we have uh, released, um, it is the goal was to make it a racing cell so we played a lot of effort on trying to keep the lightweight and keep the uh, the performances uh, to be honest this sail is 92 square meter uh, and it's only weight 75 uh, kilo which is really not bad um, uh, considering the other rate of the solar and all the wiring into uh, and it's um, and to the best of the test we've done it's a good one uh, professional uh, navigator uh, I've really uh, crashed tested it like uh, 
and, and, and validated the, the uh, I would say, performances. I am not a racer, so I, 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 it's hard for me to judge. But uh, I think our cells in, in this prism technology, it's a membrane technology, so it's, it's very um, lightweight. And, it, and it's, um, we also, um, the sail designer the, 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 is, is, um, is an Italian guy from uh, one cell, uh, Flavio Formosa, is really good at designing and well known in the field to, to design quality cells. Are these OPVs being incorporated in carbon fiber cells or other cell material? No, there is no carbon into it. Um, there's, there's a membrane and um, there's a lot of fibers, not carbon, a lot of fibers to take, to take all the mechanical strains. That was one of the deal. The deal is we don't want these solar panels to, uh, to be suffering from mechanical strains. So the mechanical strain goes on the fibers and not on, on the panels. We are very happy with the uh, durability of it because uh, when you have something so new, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's always impossible to predict any uh, durability. And that's why we did this four season testing. And uh, I was on the boat last week and I, 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 I examined the sail uh, close for, from, from very close and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's fine and I'm very happy with it. Uh, in terms of sail performance, it is, it is perfectly fine. In terms of solar, it is still perfectly fine. And the thing is, uh, the sail has been under torture, you know, it's been, uh, it's been uh, sailing in rough conditions, it's been uh, four seasons, it's been freezing, it's been raining, it's been uh, a lot of UVs, and um, I am extremely satisfied to, to see that the sail is still working as it was um, uh, 10 months ago. Ah, the cost. Uh, Everybody would understand that a solar cell may cannot cost the same cost as a, as a normal cell, like it's a two-on-one product. Um, it, the cost is really difficult to, to imagine. Uh, it really depends on what the boat uh, needs in terms of electricity. Uh, if you want 80% uh, of the sail to be covered or if, you do, or, or if you're just okay with, uh, uh, I don't know, five or 10 square meter. Um, but our goal is to manufacture qu quite heavily solarized sail uh, to uh, maximize the, uh, the electricity at the end of the day. And uh, for these highly solarized sails, our goal is to eventually sell them twice the cost of a real uh, of a normal sail. Uh, today, today you can choose a regular uh, performance, and I hope one day you'll choose a performance solar. <laughs> but what what can you share with us what companies are you're working with or that you're currently in discussions with well we we are already in discussions with um i would say all the major uh, the majors of the selling industry and uh we will show um uh, 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 the next prototype is going to be shown in june it's a uh, uh, quite big event. It's called V Arch. It's a big event in um, in, in, in Europe, um, and it's going to be shown on a eco-friendly uh, Mini 6.5. So it's going to be a small uh, small boat, small sail. Um, well, small, not too small actually. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's but it's going to be um, maximum solarization on top of it, like this small boat will basically produce as much energy more or less as this this prototype prototype number one that we have done on this uh, 52 foot catamaran it will be more than self-sufficient in electricity is your company planning on being at any of the boat shows well, of course we'd love to see you here in annapolis, uh, annapolis boat yes show. of course i think we will do that we we we, we did not do any uh, so far we uh, we we are we are starting and uh, of course, I think we will be uh, at the boat shows in the, in the coming years, um, along with the uh, sail, sail manufacturers. I think at the moment we are we are working a lot with uh, one sail, one sail, which uh, one sail Atlantic, and um, and and these guys go already uh, at this kind of boat show. Can you give us an overview of your relationship with Ultramare at the beginning of this 
video, we showed an Ultramare with your um, OPVs embedded in the sails. Is that? I, it's it's a it's a collaboration with the uh, with with the Ultramare factory. Um, the, the Ultramare factory produces boats, you know, and then the, when the boats are ready to go, sometimes they are, um, the, the owner is, is not planning to come before a few months or what so. And it's, uh, that's exactly what happened here. The boat that we tested on is a brand new one that is going to be delivered uh, soon, I think in the, in, in the next weeks. And uh, it was there and it was uh, used for uh, Outremer to for testing and for, um, you know, when a customer comes uh, to, to, to have a ride. And um, so, no, it's, um, it's a private boat that uh, the owner is going to be the happy man in, the, in a few weeks. Are the solar sails that you have embedded in the sails going to be part of the delivery package to the new owner? No. No, no, no. Uh, the boat is sold with uh, classic sales. Um, to be honest, I would love that uh, <laughs> the owner would like to keep it because we do a lot of, uh, of uh, acquisition of data and the more I have, the more the happier I am. One thing I didn't say is, is two different... We are not making sales only. We are um, uh, answering everybody who wants some flexible, rollable, uh, fall fallable uh, solar and there are many many applications up there so for uh, building integrated photovoltaics so the famous BIPV we will uh, we uh, we are going by the way to release uh, a setup in one month uh, to the press that is going it's it's under installation right there right now and uh, we even even more funny uh, we are building a zeppelin that is uh, going to be a, a, a quite specific zeppelin. It's called Transocean, and it's um, it's coming uh, very soon. This zeppelin is able to. Uh, the goal is also to break the record of speed of zeppelin. Uh, I think the target is in the range of. Oh, wow, that's fascinating. Does that mean that the OPVs will be incorporated in the skin of the zeppelin? Exactly. We are going to incorporate a lot of solar in the Zeppelin. And now you probably understood. It's going to be a Zeppelin that is zero carbon, zero fossil fuel, and that is able to cruise forever. And we are going to cross the Atlantic Ocean with it uh, and to break the record of uh, zero carbon crossing uh, the ocean. Be sure to keep us posted on these developments. This is fascinating. I can see where there's probably a lot of applications that the OPVs can be incorporated it into is. to produce it is. energy it is. output. Um, first of all, the deck is not huge on boats. That's that's pretty much where we stand. We started the the, 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 the the project at the beginning. We were because people want want more solar, more solar on boats, and so on. But the space is kind of limited. And, um, and, and if you just look uh, up, up uh, you see the big sails. Where do you have space in, in, in the boat? It's on the sails. Um, but for sure, we are going to uh, deploy this technology also on decks and uh, on the hulls also of the boat. Um, it is just a matter of uh, efficiency again. On the sails, I have no, no issue with size. I have plenty of space. On the boat, I, have no, I don't have a lot of space. So I have to use small uh, panels. And today, as I said, the OPV uh, does not have the efficiency that silicon has. So today, uh, 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 if you have only a small piece of space, you should, you should use silicon. But in a couple of years, that's going to be different. You, can, uh, you, you will be able to use this one, which is lighter um, and, 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 and actually very robust. You can walk on it, no problem, because this is soft materials. And, it's, uh, and, and it will make a lot of sense, and we will do it. And, and also on curved surfaces. We, by essence, we, we also did uh, cover the mast of a boat. And you know, the mast has curvature. And, uh, and it's nice because we wrapped the cell on, on the curved mass and it's um, it's a non-negligible uh, input of power. At the end, you know, you will have boats that are fully covered uh, and, 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 and then we have maximized uh, the electricity. It's good also, you can think also of lazy bags, 
Think about your lazy bag. Your lazy bag is up there and it's up there all the day long. I mean, even when you're not cruising and, uh, and you can get some power out of it. I, I did customize my own B-mini with it <laughs> already last year. <laughs> I did put a few square meters on my B-mini and, uh, and did some uh, measurements and it works fine. I was very happy. Professor, this is great. Um, I think we've learned a lot about OPVs today um, and how they might be incorporated into a cruising sailboat, especially. Uh, that's of interest to us. But could you kind of give us a summary of um, the technology and conclusion? Well, yes, there's a, a conclusion. We know it's feasible. We have done the first real flexible, real lightweight uh, sail. It, uh, it works on both sides, and also bifacial. Um, no matter where you cruise, no matter what your direction, it works. Um, it works even in diffuse light or low light on cloudy days. Um, this is one of the features of organic PV is that it's, um, it's as high efficiencies in low light, despite um, uh, the mainstream silicon. Uh, and this is why we also we choose this technology. And, um, and it's today, this technology has pretty low efficiency. Uh, if I tell you uh, this sail has only 35 watt peak per square meter, 3.5%, you'll run away and you'll go, oh no, my God, it's not a, it's not a good technology. Uh, and that's, um, um, but as I said, what count is how much energy do we have at the end of the day and good operation in non-perfect conditions brings us this electricity even with this quite low uh, low efficiency modules but you need to you need to know one thing 3.5 percent is what the industry has today uh, at the end of this year they announced to do the double so seven percent means 70 watt per square meter and because what we know in universities around the world working on the field, when we make solar cells in labs, uh, you know, when I make solar cells in my lab, they are this big. We do small things. We play on the molecules. We play on the materials to make it better. And this tiny solar cell here, it's organic, and it has an efficiency of up to 19%, 190 watt per square meter. It is just a matter of time for the industry to pick up what's done at research level to bring it to the, to the factories and to scale it up. My point is that this technology will rock because we know it does work in, in, in labs. It's just a matter of time bef be before industry really provides us modules with high efficiency. As I said, 70 watt per square meter, so double efficiency by the end of, a, of this year. And it is quite reasonable to think that within another five years, it will double again. So think about it. The same sale we've made, 10 square meter, already produced two kilowatts per day. At the end of this year, we do it again. We have four kilowatts hour a day. In five, um, five years from now, uh, we are, what did I say? Four kilowatt hour per day. In five, um, in five uh, uh, years from now, we'll got uh eight what did i say uh eight kilowatt hour per day yes eight kilowatt hour per day that's a lot of electricity and that's only a portion of the cell that is covered if you cover 80 percent of it that then you can multiply that by eight it means you have a massive amount of electricity imagine 64 kilowatt hour on a single day of, of cruising it's it's massive and the dream of all and that could be the conclusion is I'd love it to see sailboat cruising on a dead wind day with the sails up, power directly going to the engine, electric engine, of course, without touching the battery. I think this is really cool. I think we are very close to it. Even at the end of this year, I've, I've done some calculations on some boats, depending on the size of the engines, we can even power the engines of, of the electric engines with a, with a cell that is correctly solarized. And that's, that's kind of a, the dream up there. Imagine you're in the um, dead wind zone and uh, you can escape this zone thanks to the sun. 
Thanks again, Professor. This is fascinating stuff. We look forward to hearing more about the technology as it develops. Again, I think it's going to change the landscape. So thanks again. Um, talk with you soon. Thank you very much, uh, John. Thanks for the invitations. Happy. Yeah, great opportunity. And I see you in Annapolis in a, when we go back. Wonderful. If you do, <laughs> the drinks are on me.